Hi, I'm Dirk. In my last video, I talked about the Bengal JS2. That's an open source smartwatch which is built upon a JavaScript interpreter for microcontrollers. If you want to know more, just watch my video about it. One feature of this smartwatch is a built in GPS receiver. It allows to record GPS tracks just with a watch. No smartphone or internet needed. I was asked whether I already have some experience with this feature. So far I haven't, but now I'm gonna take a look and I make this video about it. So let's go! Currently you need to upload three items from the app loader to track GPS data. The first is some up-to-date A GPS data so that the receiver finds the satellites quickly on startup. They are valid only for a short period of time, so upload them on each day you plan to track some geopaths. Then you need a GPS recording app. I decide to go with GPS Recorder. And finally, there is an OpenStreetMap integration, but it pays some tribute to the limited environment of the Bengal JS2. You have to select a map section and only that one is uploaded into the watch. If you open the OpenStreetMap app, you can scroll through your card section, but currently there is no way to upload additional parts on the fly if you leave the selected area. So, for the moment, the majority of the world is just blank. Ok, now everything is on the watch and now it's time for a small bicycle trip. Ok, so now I just took my bike and rode a, bit, a little bit outside. And now I will turn on this GPS stuff and see what it records. So now I have here my watch and the only thing I have to do is to switch on the GPS recorder and I will go into the menu and there I find the GPS recorder here in the settings between the programs, there it is. And the only thing that I have to do is to turn it on and then you already see in the upper left part the satellite symbol which shows that the GPS system is now operating. And now we see what happens. Ok, I'm at the end of my small trip to test the device and now let's see what it has actually recorded. We do have the watch here and you might see that at the GPS symbol there are two small green indicators that there is actually a GPS signal and the watch is recording. And now I only have to go into the menu in the GPS recorder where I also started the stuff. I stop the recording and now I can go into the tracks menu here. And there I have the track and I can load it and I have different options to show it. And if I go into the plot open street map here then I get the open street map, map with the track, but as you see, um, the pink one is my actual track, but the map isn't in the right magnification, so it should be, it should show a larger part of the map. So while this isn't perfect, this clearly goes into the right direction. Okay, so now we got a first impression of what has happened now with this GPS recording. I must admit the weather becomes bad, it's cold. I will go home now and then we have a deeper look into what actually is now on the watch, what it has recorded and what we can do with this data. Before we have a look at the recorded tracks, a word about power consumption. As you might have seen on the watch display, I've recorded about 50 minutes of trip and that drained the battery by about 25% of its capacity. And here I take even into consideration that it wasn't fully charged in the beginning. So I would estimate that you can record by about 3.5 to 4 hours of GPS tracks with a watch before you run out of battery. But now let's have a look at the recorded tracks. 
The simplest way to do this is inspecting the track on the watch itself. Open it in GPS recorder and you get the basics, namely recording data, time and duration immediately. Currently there are also four built-in evaluations. The first one is a simple plot of the track without any map background or other indications of where you actually were. That could be seen in the second one, which features the OpenStreetMap integration. Unfortunately, it does not show the complete map at the moment, but that is surely a bug that can be fixed. Then there is an altitude graph, but it seems to be created from the barometer data and that's notoriously inaccurate. The north of Hanover in Germany is flat as can be and has in no way altitude differences of 70 meters. So this is unusable in the moment. Finally, there is a speed graph and that at least seems to be relatively exact. There is a bridge on my way where I slowed down and accelerated on the ramps and I had some slow sections while creating the footage you saw earlier. However, if you convert 12 meters per second to a more common unit, you get astonishing 43.2 kilometers or 26.8 miles per hour. No way I was that fast on my bike. So it's time to get the raw data for further evaluation. And here we come again to the great advantages of an open source system like the Bengal JS2. You are in no way locked into any walled garden. You can download your tracks onto any local device simply with the app loader in your local browser without any data being passed anywhere else. Just connect to the watch and in the section of GPS recorder an icon to download data appears. If you click on it, you can select one of the tracks and download it either in KML or in GPX format. Then you have them as simple files on your computer. I have now loaded the track into the GPS visualizer and analyzer program Viking. You see the track and if we zoom in you can see that it is quite accurate at many locations. Here for example is the bridge over the autobahn and the cycleways on both sides which the track matches quite accurately. At another part of the track it has a considerable dislocation from my actual way. I did not cycle through the backyard of house number 15 but rode directly beneath Burgwedler Straße. To be sure about precision, I recorded the same track in parallel with my Google Pixel smartphone. And here you see that the phone is generally a bit more precise than the Bengal JS2, but of course it is larger and way more expensive than the watch. And there are also parts of the track where the watch is more precise than the smartphone. When you take a look at the track points, you see that the smartwatch's track has about five times the number of track points than the Bengal JS ones. It seems that the pixel records a point each second while I set the Bengal JS to one point every five seconds. Of course, this may reduce the general precision also. If you take a look at the beginning of the track, you see that the Bengal JS started quite precise from the first actual recorded track point. Then it needed about two minutes to get its final precision. This is all due to the preloaded AGPS data. Without them, it could need several minutes until the watch has enough satellite connections to start recording at all. The AGPS step I showed you in the beginning is really important if you want to use the Bengal JS2 for recording GPS tracks. Okay, and that's it more or less at the moment with the GPS functions of the Bengal JS2. As I already mentioned in my last video, the software development for this watch is highly dynamic at the moment. So keep in mind that this is the state of the art of January 2022 and depending on when you watch this video, the apps and the functions might have evolved considerably. Perhaps I even make an update video about this somewhere in the future. But you, of course, may send me your questions or remarks now, for example here in the comments. So far, see you in the next video and thanks for watching. that drained the battery by about 20%
25 is in 